Hey everyone, welcome back to the fifth of the five pillars of what makes great principle. Alice and I have decided to do this as kind of a supplementary. Um, as you're reading this, we know uh, many school districts are using this book for book studies. And so we wanted to hear some, you know, us breaking down some thoughts, maybe share some insights that are not in the book, um, but also just some kind of the behind the scenes about this idea. And the last pillar we're talking about, and mm -hmm. let's play this little game. <laughs> let's play the game. <laughs> Play it again. So the last episode, I made you name the three that we talked about before, but now there's four. Let's okay. see if you can do it again. Let's see if Allison can do it. What are the four pillars, Allison, before the fifth one, which is visionary, which was very deliberately the last one. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what are the four prior? Relationship builder. Okay. Continuous learner. Talent cultivator. And resource maximizer. Okay. Before we get into the visionary one. Which one was your favorite to write about? Like out of oh. all the five, did you have a favorite? Oh my gosh. They all, I love them all. Um, I mean, my favorite really is always talent cultivator just because yeah. I I think it's a underutilized resource sometimes in our schools, but there's so much talent that's right there in our buildings. Yeah, you know, actually this leads perfectly to why I even asked the question. I think when you look at these five things, it's not about like, hey, I want to be equally as good in all of these things. These are all important things, but there's there's going to be strengths that you have that maybe your assistant principal has something different. Even when you're looking at this, if you're hiring, let's like, say you have an, a like, you know, there's a lot of roles that the assistant principal will do that this obviously is a great book for assistant principals, you know, people aspiring to these leadership positions. Maybe it's asking questions like, hey, I'm really good at you know being a resource maximizer so i actually don't need someone like that of course they need to understand it but who are the people that i ha maybe need to kind of fill in some of the blanks of the strengths that i have too i think that's a yeah. that's a, actually a very good point that i just kind of came off that line. was a really really good point like what <laughs> gaps exist in our staff oh. or in our leadership that we right. need to fill and yeah. often we're looking to hire people who fit in well with us but really right. what we need to hire is the people we need to become better. Right. And look at these five, look at these five pillars as maybe pieces of a puzzle. What are the pieces you're missing that someone else can fill in for you? Right. So I know very intentionally, I look when I was admin to hire people and I did this from experience because this is how I was hired. Who are people different than me? I don't need a George clone. I already got a George. There's, I will tell you, there is no one in the world who is as good as me at being George ah. Kroos. I am the best George Kroos out there. You I don't really need a, I don't need a second George Kroos. Nobody needs a second George Kroos. No, no, I 100 Hey, easy, <laughs> easy. All right. Okay, so Alice is, gonna start, Alice is gonna start this off. What we got, what's the question? So it was interesting because we, there was lots of back and forth as we were mm -hmm. putting this book together, writing the book. And one of the last kind of questions and back and forth we had, was about the title of your chapters mm -hmm. and the title of your chapter, which your chapters are the preface to all the pillars yeah. that you wrote beautifully. But the title of your preface for visionary is future goes last. And yeah. it's a provocative it's statement. Provocative. I'd, love to, uh -huh. I'd love to hear about it. So I'm um, actually, uh, I don't know what was going on. And this is um, right now I'm actually, I don't know, have you seen the adjourn stuff? I've been trying to get people to yeah. like, do some new stuff. So I, 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 I have benefited tremendously, not only physically from like taking better care of myself, but it's also mentally. Like I find that many of my best ideas um, come from when I'm on a bike, when I'm running, my head seems to be clear. And I distinctly remember being on a bike and calling you, not on a like bike outside, but on a, uh, like a like a peloton bike and uh saying visionary needs to be the last thing to talk about <laughs> because a lot of times when leaders go into schools they have certain gifts and talents that they're really good at and then they want to shape the school in their image without actually knowing any of the people that they serve and so that, you know, you, you always kind of want the last chapter really talks about your fingerprints, some of the gifts that you bring to the school that will be there after you leave. But you really, for you to be visionary, you have to know who are the people you serve in that building? What access do you have to resources? You know, what are some of the things you can do? 
So a lot of times it, we walk into organizations, vision, our visionary is the first thing we focus on and we're excited about it, but no one else is excited about it, nor wants to do it. So really that vision can be altered once you start to get to know people, get to know where they want to go and how you get them to that place. Cause I think a lot of times, and this is, we had a really great, um, I had a really great conversation with Katie Martin, who was so instrumental in putting this book together. She was really helpful because she's just a good, I trust her eye and I got Allison and her to work together um, because I've worked with Katie several times and I just, a lot of the stuff, she just got rid of my stuff because I like, she just knows like he's going on too long or, or he's trying to say this. So I just trust her, but I didn't know, you know, I'm very comfortable with her. I think it was the first time you worked with her. She said to me, uh, I remember this. I, I'm struggling with your visionary chapter because you wrote Innovator's Mindset. You have a very clear vision of where you want education to go. So why aren't you talking about that here? I said, because this is not about me pushing my vision onto a school district. This is about people figuring out their vision that works best for who they serve and works best for the community that they're in. So I'm not here to tell you what I would want or where I want to go. It's your job to figure that out, but you shouldn't figure that out before you even walk into the building. Like you shouldn't yeah. know that before. And I think that's what gets a lot of people into trouble is that they have a very clear vision of what they want to do in education and they don't even know what they have access to or the people they serve. And so that's why it was very, it was very, um, I think the other chapters relationship builder, I think could go first. The other ones could kind of be mixed around. This one had to go last. And I think that's that's why. 100% agree. Um, and I, I, I don't know who I was talking to, but I talk to new leaders all the time. And they say, okay, what's your number one advice? And I don't, I give your advice. Mm -hmm. When you walk into a school building or a school district as a new leader, figure out a strength of every staff member. And that's what you taught me and taught so many of us before you change, make any changes. Because it's so important to understand what is before we try to figure out what's next. Yeah, if you, th this is something, that one of the reasons I say this is that if you go into a place and people think you're trying to change them or fix them, they'll fight you the entire time. Oh. But if people know you value them, they'll, they'll, be, they'll go along the ride and they'll be willing to put, they know you're supporting them to get better, they, they, got, they got you. So one of the things that you wrote about and talk about provocative, What is a crystal ball meeting? Tell me about this. Tell tell right. the readers if they know this because this is like a, I think it's a really good strategy. Like, and it talks about this vision. What is a crystal ball meeting? How does it actually tie to what I just talked about as well? So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, people who consider themselves fortune tellers mm -hmm. um, will have a crystal ball and wave. I mean, we see this in Disney movies, right? Like wave their hands over it and see a vision of the future. And as a leader, it is, as a principal, it is so important to pause and to have those crystal ball meetings and look at it in two ways. One is, what if nothing changed mm -hmm. for this, this particular situation that you're thinking about? What if nothing changed? What would the future look like? Would things improve? Would they get worse? Would they stay the same? I mean, we know that things don't usually stay the same. They either improve or decline. And then thinking about like looking at it as in what could be, and then backtracking and, and, and back planning of what are the steps to get to where things could be. And in the book, I'll give just a few away, but I wrote about some questions that you could ask during crystal ball meetings. So you have these crystal ball meetings with yourself. So you can vision, envision what things could be in three months, six months, but then you have them with teams of teachers or staff members or individual teachers. And you ask like, what are the two biggest challenges that are impeding the success of with your students and what challenge do you wanna focus on first? And then what if nothing changed? What would the results be in this situation in six months, in three months? And then if things changed, what could the results be? And how could this impact student achievement? And then, then talk about, all right, what are the steps that need to we need to take in order to make that that vision come to life. So not only are you doing that yourself with or, or with a team of leaders, but also with individual teachers or groups of teachers. You know, I was I was listening to you, I was talking about all this stuff. 
And it's actually kind of full circle moment to think about this. When we talk about like, hey, vision, it kind of comes last, right? You got to kind of understand who you serve, think about this. Um, I actually just listened to you. Great job on uh, Teachers on Fire podcast. You talked about how this book came together. And we, I kind of threw this out to you. I kind of had a vision for what I wanted to do, but then I, there's something I just didn't like about it. But then I actually um, read your book on leading the whole teacher and then kind of understanding some of your strengths, some of the some stuff that you're really good at. Then it was like, okay, here's like a vision. Here's how, like, it's not you're writing a George book. It's like, here's, let's write a book that has like pit, bits and pieces of stuff we've done in the past and make something really interesting together. So it's actually kind of the vision didn't come together until I actually started digging into your stuff. Like I could not figure it out. That is kind of, wow, that was kind of profound. Yeah. We lived out this chapter in right. writing this book. Yeah. yeah, cause I like, I just, I just couldn't see it. I like, I was like, you know, like it's, it's just gonna be a book about principal stories and I just, something just didn't, I'm like, that's not what I want this to be, but I don't know what I want it to be. And mm -hmm. I had to read your stuff to like, oh, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm in on that because like, I'm already good at the stuff I'm good at. Right, right. right. So that's kind of weird to kind of think about that. But um, I just want to say, this is the last one we're going to do for a little bit. We'll probably come back and revisit the book, you know, later on in the year. Um, we are hoping to do some like um, book studies and stuff like this. I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much to Allison, because there's a lot of stuff that, and Allison and I are very, like, we get along very, very well, but we're very different, which I think is also kind of emblematic of what we talk about. And that was one of the things I really love. Remember when we put, you actually put this on Instagram, you put the, the cover on. Yeah. Someone said, oh, it's really interesting because um, the pillars kind of rep look different. They're not all the same that says like, hey, there's like, some structural things that really, really matter, but the way we can do it will be different. I'm like that's like, you could not nail what we were trying to do in the cover better. And right. that's kind of like Allison. Allison and I are like, you know, have different strengths. We have maybe some different viewpoints. We still want to do the same thing, but we do it in different ways. So we don't, we don't want to make carbon copy principles. That's not the intent of this book. It's really kind of making sure. And so Allison, I just loved working with you and you are so um, awesome kind of doing so much behind the scenes stuff and um it would be remiss not to mention we had like 15 amazing contributors to this book who bring a voice and as okay so if anyone's making it to the end of this this is like a <laughs> secrets of secrets of george oh i did not read the full book until it came out because i just can't do it i just can't do it so i read parts of it and stuff like that but it's really hard for me it's like, I can't understand a house if there's no furniture in it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I'm that guy. Like I got it. Yeah. You can't like explain it to me. I can't see blueprints. I got to see the house. Right. That's so interesting. Yes. So when I was reading it and I read it a chapter a day and I would tweet stuff that I was reading and what my takeaways were, cause I knew like, I tried, like I knew it was good and like, I knew, but I like, but I, as I was reading it and reading the contributor chapters, like I really appreciate what you wrote, obviously. I loved writing this book. This is probably one of my favorite books to write ever. Like I had so much fun writing this, but the perspectives from teachers and from students in this book, just I was like, I wish I would have had this book when I, know. I was a principal, right? It kind of bugs me that you're only a principal for 19 years and not 20. That round number is really bad. <laughs> it's my favorite number. You know, like Taylor Swift with 13, 19 is my favorite number. Just so you know. Uh, just that you just, one more, you could have been a nice round 20. <laughs> right? Um, I feel like so you're tormenting me when you're saying that. Like, you're like, yeah, I did 20. I did almost 19. <laughs> I could say almost 20 or 20, but I can't lie. I, just don't have I know, I know. So um, I Go ahead, go ahead, please. Sorry. I just want to mention one thing. It's so interesting to me that you couldn't read the book until it was together because just how you operate, because I'm the exact opposite and that I loved puzzling this book together and like which, and just thinking through like which chapters should precede each other. Um, and then like how to tie the chapters together, like putting it together was so much fun for me. Yeah, I, and I could tell, and that's why I'm like, I don't need to read till it's done. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of shows how we are very different. So I will leave you with these. This is the last, so the spoiler alert, this is the last two sentences or the last two paragraphs in the book. 
Um, I write, what will your fingerprints be on your school? After you leave, how will people know you're there? Your legacy will become part of the legacy you inspire others to create for themselves. So we hope through the writing of this book, through you reading it and not just reading it, but doing something with it, um, that we've had a little part in your trajectory because we know your trajectory will impact so many people. So uh, we hope this helped you. And uh, Allison is awesome. Just, you know, have an excuse because you don't, because I text you on Sundays, you don't respond back, whatever. So this is the way I, I really finish the talk. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day. Allison, thanks so much for being on. Uh, thank you. Make sure you get your copy of What Makes a Great Principal. And if you are at uh, NASP, NAESP, the United Conference, um, this actually might be just right before Allison's there. Go say hi to Allison. She will sign your book. And Allison, you have full rights to sign my name too. I actually have a it. Stop <laughs> it. I hope you're, I was, I was kidding. I'm kidding that. Oh. That was AI. I, that was AI. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm going to do All a right. little caricature review. Pick up the book. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Take care.